Well, bombs are not armed uh, when they put aboard. I have to pull the cotter pin from the fuse and this releases a vein when it spins around, it releases the detonator so it explode when it hits the ground. And this is a pin from the first bomb I dropped on D-Day. It says pin from first bomb to leave our ship 29722 on D-Day, June 6, 1944, RPG. Time, 0658. The following is presented with limited editing. Those interviewed are witnesses to history and deserve to have their stories heard in their entirety. Okay, whatever you're ready. Okay, I'm Ralph Goldsticker Jr. And I was born October 26, 1921 in University City, Missouri. And I lived in University City until I was 18 and went through the University City school systems and graduated in August 1938. And growing up, of course, I was in the Boy Scouts is where I was really involved. And I became a, an Eagle Scout, as well as my three sons and my grandson. <laughs> and uh, I went to Washington University for one semester and $125. And this was deep in the Depression. I had an older sister was 22 months older. She wasn't allowed to go to school because they were saving the money for the, the mail, which was me. So, uh, but after the one semester, we still didn't have another 20, $125 for the second semester. And we moved in the city by then. And Harris Teachers College was free for citizens of St. Louis. So I went to Harris Teachers College for another year and a half. And I had two years of college. And, I wasn't a great student, so I dropped out and got a job as a dry goods company downtown, rice sticks, for 50 cents an hour, and working 44 hours a week, eight hours, and then four hours on Saturday. And when Pearl Harbor came along, I knew I was going to get drafted, so I applied to the Aviation Cadet Corps and took the test and was accepted. And I enlisted in July 6, 1942, in the Army Air Corps as an aviation cadet. I was at Jefferson Barracks for a couple of months, and then I went to Nashville. Was a, it opened as a classification center, and we took tests, mental, physical, psychological, inside and out, to see whether you're qualified to be a pilot, a bombardier, or a navigator, and I passed all three. So I was sent to Maxwell Field, Alabama, for pre-flight, and Maxwell Field was an old, established base. Instead of having a barracks of 60, we had rooms of only six of us in a suite. And someone asked if I was still friends with those roommates. I said, unfortunately, no. Four out of the six of us were killed during the war. We'd been together at pre-flight. We were together again at pilot school. So after six weeks at Maxwell Field, I was sent to Dar Field, Dar Aerotech in Albany, Georgia for pilot training. I said I wanted to be a pilot. I'd never been in an airplane, but as you said, I'd seen Jimmy Stewart and Clark Gable are heroes in movies, so uh, maybe I thought it was glamorous or something, but I didn't know what I was getting into. But I went to pilot school and took training in a PT-17, which is a Stearman biplane. And uh, after 10 hours, I had my first solo flight and landing beautifully. And, right down the middle of the runway. And I thought the wind was coming from the left, so I kicked the left rudder and spun around and cracked the wing. And I can still see my instructor at the end of the runway throwing his parachute down. <laughs> How could a student do that? Well, he did the same thing the next day, so it wasn't so bad. 
But after I flunked my 40-hour flight check, I wasn't a very good pilot, I guess. I was flying around too much, and uh, I was washed out. And after 40 hours and two minutes, but I did a 10-hour solo, which I, I still remember today. It was great in this open cockpit plane. And washed out, went back to Nashville, said, well, I want to be a bombardier. I would see the movie, the bombardier, where the bombardier was a hero, so I didn't know what a bombardier did, but as a bombardier, I found out they were going to have two 50 caliber guns in the nose where I would be sitting. So I had to go to aerial gunnery school, went to Laredo, Texas for six weeks of aerial gunnery training. And then went to Childress, Texas and had 12 weeks of bombardier training. And then they added six weeks of navigation training on. And on December 3rd, the day before we were going to graduate, two of our planes collided and three of my classmates were killed. And I'd been with them. Their names are Dempsey, IE, and French. If you know anything about the Army, everything's alphabetical. So I'd been with them all along. And I was commissioned on December 4th, second lieutenant in the Army Air Corps, December 4th, 1942. So what, uh, what, what did basic training look like? like what I really training? didn't have basic training. All I did was barracks, march up and down the field, peel potatoes, and learn the Air Corps song. No, I had, I don't remember any basic training whatsoever. We did nothing. Okay, okay. So what, uh, like, what kind of stuff were they teaching you at Bombardier School? Well, and we had the Norden bomb site, which was our secret weapon in World War II. We're bombing from anywhere from 25, 27,000 feet, and the bombs, of course, leave the plane at. Air, your airspeed of the plane, but gravity takes over at a tangential rate going down the ground. And the Norden bomb site would solve that problem. I'd put in the altitude we were, the speed of the plane, the drift, and it would solve the rest of the problem. We'd be dropping about maybe half a mile before the target, and this would go right down on the target, and that's all the problem. We, we didn't always hit, we came close, but we'd dropping 18 planes at the same time, so most of them are big targets like airfields or air, uh, ordnance factories or the oil refineries. So uh, we did a pretty good job. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you remember your first flight? Absolutely. I went to 29, well after, let's back up a little bit. After I was commissioned, went to uh, McDill Field in Florida, Tampa, Florida, and they put together air crews there. I mean, all the bombardiers, navigators, and, Gunners, so they put together an air crew. And we flew around Florida for about four months. And after, on I think May 5th, they sent us to Savannah to pick a brand new shiny B-17 to take it to England. So we went from Savannah to Fort Dix, New Jersey. And the co-pilot from Far Rockway, New York, uh, which is on Long Island, he called his dad and said, we'd be over in the morning. We were, we buzzed right down the middle of the main street in Far Rockway, about 100 feet above the rooftops. Well, that's a no-no, but we're going overseas anyway. They couldn't do anything. So, uh, and then we went to uh, Peacefield, New Hampshire, and from there we went to Labrador. And uh, Labrador, we spent an extra couple of days because Marty, our co-pilot, had a cold and we couldn't fly. And we took off from Labrador, and a night flight from Labrador to Iceland. It was a eight and a half hour flight and we were scared because when we were flying to Florida one time we flew from Tampa to New Orleans and back to Tampa and we were over the Atlantic and the navigator said go 90 degrees well that was straight out over the Atlantic while well, I was sitting in the nose so I knew we'd pass over Florida so I told no Marty we don't want to do that <laughs> so we were kind of scared on that flight because night flight and planes had disappeared they just Never showed up. People missing Iceland. But anyway, he landed right on the button in Iceland. It was cold, rainy, snowy, and all I remember about Iceland, they had outhouses and the wind whipping through the bottom. You literally froze your ass. And now it's our destiny. People go there on vacation, but I wouldn't have done it. We flew from there to Nuts Corner, Ireland, then into England. And we went as a replacement in the 452nd bomb group. They lost 24, 14 planes out of 24 on the 12th of May 
on a mission to Brooks, Czechoslovakia. They had fighter uh, fight in and out and flak. So we went as a replacement, the 452nd Bomb Group. And we flew about England, about 10 days getting acclimated. And my first mission was the 27th of May, 1944. Uh, target was a heavy gun emplacement on the French coast at St. Valery, getting ready for the invasion. So we're over enemy territory in 10 minutes, and they well, this isn't so bad. Then two days later, our target was Leipzig, Germany. It was a nine hour flight in and out, and we lost three out of 18 planes that day. And I'm figuring they lost 14 out of 24, we lose three out of 18. How are you gonna survive? I, every mission I thought I was gonna die. And my next three or four, well, one was to Reims, and one was to Bologna, and one was to Schwerty in Germany, and another was to Bremen, Germany. And then, uh, on the night of the 5th of June, 1944, we were called in for briefing about 10 o'clock and said the invasion was on and our target was a heavy gun emplacement between Khan and the Sword Beach. And we took off about 2 o'clock in the morning and there were so many planes in the sky, we had to fly up to Scotland to get organized into groups, three bomber streams coming down into the beaches. And I dropped my first bomb, I, the Caterpillar says 6.58 a.m. right in front of Sword Beach. It was cloudy that day, so I couldn't see much. And we went back to England, got back about 9.30. So we're in seven and a half hours that trip. They reloaded the plane and we got something to eat. We took off again at two o'clock. And uh, our target then was Argentine, about 30 miles south of the beaches, at railroad junction. So the, Germans couldn't bring supplies or troops forward. And that day, that afternoon was clear. I could see the, the harbor. I mean, it's 50 miles from one end from Sword Beach to Utah. And there were about 7,000 vessels in there. There were battleships, cruisers, landing craft. Might have been canoes, I don't know. But it, it was a sight you've never seen. And going back to England, the whole southern end of England, every street, road, highway was loaded with trucks and jeeps, ambulances, tanks, you name it, ready to go ashore. At the end of D-Day, there were about 150,000 troops, Allied troops had landed on the beaches in, in France at Normandy. So we got back about nine o'clock that night. So I was in the air 14 and a half hours. We had a comparatively easy compared to those on the ground that had to fight their way in. And of course, Omaha was the worst of all of them. Mm -hmm.